Sunday after Pentecost. And the uh, epistle is from St. Paul to the Galatians. Brethren, walk in the spirit and do not fulfill the, des the desires of the flesh. Because the flesh fights against the spirit. Whereas the spirit fights against the flesh. Both of these are enemies to each other. So that you do not do whatever you like. Because if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. But the works of the flesh are manifest, and they are fornication, uncleanness, uh, impudicity, lack of modesty, luxuriousness, service of the idols, the, uh, the devil worshipping, the uh, enmities, the contentions, the jealousies, the anger, the, the, the fightings, the dissensions, the sects, the uh, the envies, the uh, homicides, the drunkenness, the uh, uh, the sterility, and all the, the and all these others, which I uh, which I preach to you, and I, as I preached before, that all those who commit those things shall not enter into the kingdom of of God. The fruits of the spirit are these: charity, peace, joy, patience, benignity, goodness. Longanimity, meekness, faithfulness, modesty, continence, and chastity. Against these there is no law. And therefore those who belong to Christ have crucified their flesh with its vices and its desires. And the Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one master and serve the other master, or he will bear with one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And therefore, I say to you, do not be worried about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to dress, what you, uh, because your, uh, isn't your soul more than, its, than food, and your body more than your dress? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not uh, sow nor reap, and they do not put in granaries, but your Father gives them all the food they need. Aren't you not much more than them? Which of you can add uh, 40 centimeters to his height? And why are you worried about what you're going to wear? Be, uh, look at the, the lilies of the field, how, much they, how they grow. They do not work and they do, they do not sow. They do not sue. And, and I say to you that neither Solomon in all, in all of his glory was dressed like one of these. So if the, the grass of the fields is, such, is dressed that way by God and it stays only one day and, and it fades away the next day, how much you of little faith? How much more you of little faith? Therefore do not worry by saying what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? And what are we going to wear? All these things the pagans are looking for. Your Father who is in heaven knows that you need all these things. Therefore, seek first the kingdom of God and His justice, and the rest shall be added on to you. Now, Father and Son and Holy Ghost, amen. My dear faithful, you, uh, you uh, hurry, you can sit down, it's okay. Unless it's going to be wet. Um, St. Paul is very clear. He says, if you want to belong to Christ, it's not enough to say, I belong to Christ. It's not enough to say, like the Protestants, like the Protestants, uh, you know, I take Christ as my personal Savior. St. Paul says, if you want to belong to Christ, you have to crucify your flesh with its wicked desires and, uh, uh, and then with its uh, wicked uh, concupiscence. The con it's called the concupiscence of the flesh. If you don't crucify your, your flesh in Christ, then you do not belong to Christ. There is, in our religion, our religion is the religion of Jesus crucified. That's why I told you last time 
This is the mass of Jesus crucified. That's why it's the correct mass. Because there is only one true religion, which is the religion that worships and that applies the, uh, the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no two ways. The rest is the religion of something else than Jesus crucified. Or it's the religion that omits what helps us to be with Jesus crucified, which is the Blessed Virgin Mary. Or it is something that omits the sacraments of Jesus crucified that are necessary for salvation, like Protestantism. Or the religion that hates uh, and that considers the Jesus crucified as the blasphemy, and that's Islam. And, or the religion that there is no Jesus in the first place, with God, that's Judaism, and there, there, the religion that uh, there is no God, no, no one God, and that's Buddhism and Hinduism. So our religion, if, you, you cannot, if somebody asks you what's your religion, my religion is the religion of Jesus crucified. That's, that's our religion. It's a religion of the, of the cross. Now the Catholic Church is in big trouble because the, uh, today there is a new religion that has evacuated the, the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not that they uh, don't have any crucifix. They, you can still go crucifix somewhere. But they, they are also changing. They are, they are insisting on the resurrection of our Jesus Christ. That's their new theology. But that wouldn't be as damageable if people would have also evacuated the crucifixion of our Jesus Christ in their lives. That's the main problem. That's why we have a trouble. And, and that led to also a doctrinal trouble then eventually. But the, the thing is, is that today's modern man refuses the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they don't want sacrifice. That, that it's a religion without sacrifice. There is no more spirit of sacrifice. Now, everybody has to be comfortably installed in his suburban entity. Everybody must have a car. Everybody just must have a widescreen TV. Everybody must have a dog. Everybody must have PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Everybody must have the latest uh, Louis Vuitton uh, $4,500 handbag. Everybody must have all these gadgets, the latest uh, you know, um, iPhone uh, number 5. Everybody must have you know, the latest uh, things. And uh, nobody is supposed to have 10 children. Nobody is supposed to have large families. No large families is supposed to have lots of vocations. Uh, nobody, um, uh, nobody should uh, uh, divorce. Uh, no, uh, no, nobody should be forbidden to divorce. If somebody is divorced and goes to communion, who am I to judge? That's a new mentality. No, even even the, the Holy Father has encouraged it. He called a lady who was divorced and remarried. He says, oh, "Go to communion, please. You know, be nice to me. Go to communion." Divorce is okay, who am I to judge, you know, and gays and all that. Because, why? Because there is no uh, cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ is vital because it prevents us from corruption. It's the mirror, the, the, the king, you know, Balthazar, Melchior, or Gaspar, one of the three, was carrying the mirror. The mirror prevents the corruption, that's why it's used for the sepulture. But Without the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are rot. There's a rottenness, and it's, the list is given by St. Paul of, of all the forms of rottenness, the fruits of the flesh. It, it rots, it stinks, it, it, it dis disintegrates. And so you want the faith, you want to prevent the faith from disintegrating, you have to uphold the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we are decadent suburbanites. It's enough for us to be suburbanites. We've got no option, you know. I am with you in a suburb of Malvar now. I'm a suburbanite like you, but let us not be decadent suburbanites. Let us not embrace, let us not accept the throwing off of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not that way that we can go to, uh, to heaven. We are not the cheerleaders of the, the way of the cross. The new religion is that our Lord goes to be crucified, 
And then we cheer him, you know, we encourage him, go Jesus, you know, go and get crucified for us, because once it's done, everybody is saved, you know, because you are God, you've done such a beautiful uh, work and everything. And then Jesus replies, thank you for your encouragement and your cheerleading, and now, you know, I'm feeling much better, and I, I'll be happy to be crucified for you, and uh, enjoy your popcorns and your soft drinks. <laughs> so, that's not our religion. Otherwise, our Lord would have told us. But it says, if you want to be my disciple, you must put your cross uh, and, f and uh, follow. If anybody is interested. If, our Lord said, if you are interested, that's what you've got to do. If you're not interested, I'm sorry, you got the wrong religion. There are plenty of our comfortable religions for you. And Mickey Mouse religion, they are available on Amazon and YouTube and everything. And uh, at every corner in the streets now, you got to... Those churches that are telling you, uh, you know, all you, you need to, to hear to have a nice, suburban, nice, comfortable religion, which nobody criticizes and nobody persecutes. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, because we are persecuted, we are right. You know, it doesn't mean because they call us disobedient, they call us all kinds of names of birds and crazy and everything. It does. I could be wrong. You know, some people who are wrong were persecuted. You know, when. When the communists were persecuted by the CIA in Bolivia, when they killed Che Guevara, it doesn't mean that Che Guevara was right. But in matters of religion, persecution may be a good sign. May, maybe. You got you to check if this is what is said in the Gospel or not. Whether I am creating, making things up. All I'm asking you is to accept the entire Gospel of our Lord. Those passages that are not so comfortable, and those passages that are consoling, because our Lord also meant to console us, because He knows it's not easy to carry our cross, and that's why He created the Blessed Virgin Mary to put some jam and jelly and sugar and honey on our crosses. That's that's why Our Lady is so important. But Our Lady also tells us, "I'm here with you, but you have to swallow your." Uh, your cross, like a good mother puts the spoon in the in the mouth of the baby, because the mother wants the baby to live. So, so is our lady. She wants the cross for us. And so we, um, as traditional Catholics, this is what we stand for: the religion of our Jesus Christ. In this beautiful feast of the 14th of September, tomorrow is Our Lady of Sorrows again. There are sorrows in our religion, and uh, we have to face uh, to face this and use this. It's, we remember today the, when Emperor Heraclius found the true cross. They had the, they had lost some battles against the Parthian Empire, and then the, the Parthians captured the uh, relic, the big relic of the true cross that the emperor took for the battle because he thought that it would help him for the victory. But there again, you know, it's not because you take a relic of the true cross that automatically you are going to win against the enemies of Christ. It's not that easy. The crusaders had victories against the Muslims. They also had defeat against the Muslims. And so you cannot expect that you know, God is going to give you your victories on a platter or on a conveyor belt just by taking a relic of the true cross. And that's one lesson there. You... In French, we say you are not going to get any omelette without breaking eggs. You cannot have your cake and eat it. It's impossible. You've got to choose. So he lost the relic of the true cross. After a long campaign, he was able to retrieve it miraculously. Uh, and then the, it was brought to Jerusalem and they had a procession. And the emperor tried to carry the cross and do the way of the cross. Hoping to be uh, have cheerleaders, you know, along the way and everything, and then, and then he could not move. He could not move. He had the cross, and could not move. Impossible to move. He did not understand. Nobody understood. But then it's the patriarch of Jerusalem who understood what was the problem. He says, "Your Highness, you are wearing the wrong clothes." Our Lord was wearing, uh, you know, the very poor clothing, and he was reviled and despised. What are you doing with your crown and your jewels and your purple and your silk? Take off the garments of your glory and put on the garment of a common man. 
who is despised. So they took uh, one of those gentlemen who were uh, in the street there, and they put his uh, vile garments. And once this was done, then of course the, uh, the emperor could uh, proceed. And so that's why along our way, along the way of the truth, there's going to be a lot of humiliations. Like us, you know, we are being thrown out on the street, and we are not even guaranteed the secure possessions of our, of our goods. We are being dragged or threatened uh, before the police, the civil authorities, and everything. So it really helps us. If we make a good use of it, then the fruits are there. And you can see the fruits because we are getting what we want. What we want around these days is good seminarians, good quality seminarians. So I possibly have six seminarians. You know, last time I announced you uh, four, and you know, actually we have six. So good news. That's what we want. Now there is a price to pay for us. There is a price to pay. We cannot choose the big, nice seminary buildings that are in Manila. We cannot choose them. The Rolls Royce. No. We, we are, the people are running after us and they are saying they are, they are liars, they are thieves, they are irregular, they are excommunicated and everything. Why? Because we want to stick to only this. Because we know there is no other option. I hope you come to this understanding. The understanding of the... Uh, uh, premise of the reasoning is that we cannot make the economy of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. All the souls in hell have tried to do without the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. They have demonstrated to us that you cannot do the economy of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is uh, no other way. One of my favorite series, uh, 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 sorry, books is Bright's Head Revisited, which was made also into series later. And it's the story actually of Lady Marchmain. And she loses and she loses the battle. Her husband is a pagan and a drunkard. And then one of her sons is a drunkard. And all of her kids lose the faith one after the other. And they live in adultery and, and she's completely ashamed. And she dies of sorrow prematurely. The broken heart of a mother because all of her children are going the wrong way. And so uh, she loses. She dies with the idea that uh, the salvation of her children is, is completely compromised. And they are going with the modern world. They are going to follow the sins of the modern world. But from the day she dies, then the grace of God catches up with her husband and all of her children, down to the last child who was a drunkard and hopeless and, and you know, effeminate and everything. And she fishes them back from the afterlife. And that's typical of our God who loves apparent defeat. When there is apparent defeat, rejoice. It means that you, you, you are going to reap the fruits. Good fruits are going to be uh, given to you. And this mother retrieves everything. And she sweeps the board and brings all of her children to, to her. But she was completely broken hearted. And so many stories like that probably in the world of today, so many of you probably parents worried about the faith of your children, worried about the transmission of the faith. But don't worry, if you, uh, if you worry, if you are broken hearted, if it is a cross for you, it's a good sign, because eventually you will get what you want. Because the power of God has been attached to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just like the power of God has been attached to our lady. If we want power, we have to use the means in which this power has been enclosed. And that's why a religion without the cross of our Jesus Christ fades away. It's powerless. And it's powerless against the devil. But the devil will make sure that we get crosses. And that this is very good. But the devil, like in the, the mystery of the cross of our Lord, fights against himself when he fights us, when he persecutes us. He's actually... If he is well used, he is our biggest friend. He hates to hear that. But if, if we bear with patience what he launches against us, he is our biggest friend. Because he purifies us. He purifies us and he makes us without pride, without self-love, without self-conceit, uh, pride and pharisaism. 
and 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 he also this cross is spoil uh, this spoils from uh, our impurities. That is very often when we do something good, we pride ourselves of it, and it, we don't know how to rub it off. There is no other way than the humiliation of the cross, because the highest crosses are the humiliations. I've seen people, you know, who flog themselves, the Hindus especially. The Hindus, they can do a pilgrimage bare feet, you know, 400 uh, kilometers one way, and then they go the other way, they come back home on foot, under the blazing sun. I've seen one Hindu hanging on the, on the hooks. But this is all pride, this is, this is all, uh, you know, uh, a stunt to impress people. This is not a humiliation. Nowhere in uh, Hinduism it is uh, recommended to uh, bear humiliations. No. You do some prowess with uh, hooks and, and uh, lashes and, uh, and non pilgrimages and other uh, deprivations. Some of their swamis, you know, they can spend five years, ten years without eating anything and drinking anything. Nobody understands how it's done. But that's Hinduism. Great prowesses and so-called miracles. Now, the miracle of our religion is that our Lord Jesus Christ is teaching us how to embrace, especially our humiliations, and they are the highest crosses. Because in the end, in the end, the goal of the cross is to make us love God perfectly, love Him above all things, and there is nothing that uh, you know naturally we are attach more to than ourselves. But the love of self is the definition of sin, the inordinate love of self. Whereas what's happening in the Holy Trinity is the, the perfect gift of self of each person of the Holy Trinity to the others. And so this cannot be replicated by us unless we uh, strip ourselves of these uh, impurities, especially because of original sin. So love your crosses passionately. The more you love the cross, the more you enjoy the fruits of the cross, the more the fruits of the cross led you, lead you into uh, accepting the crosses with a smile, with joy, with a great welcome. And once, you, once you've learned your lesson several times, then uh, it is a, a virtuous cycle. That is, you reap more benefits. Your, your, your works are more successful, especially on the, on the souls. And so, we will have, if you, if you stick to, to tradition, if you stick to this Mass, I promise you the joy of the cross. That's, that's, uh, that's I promise you. You will have crosses, but you will have the joys that are attached to it. And there is no other way. If there were any other way, then I would be uh, in France enjoying myself. And drink my Bordeaux wine and my foie gras. You know, I would not be here. But because there is no other way, I, I came over here to break the news to you that there is no other way. If there were any other way, our Lord would have told us. He didn't tell anything about this. There is only one way, which is the way of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whereas the way of perdition is nice and wide and comfortable. And there's a lot of Mickey Mouse, and there's a lot of popcorns, and a lot of soft drink, there's a lot of gadgets, there's a lot of fornication and immodesty, there's plenty of things there. Look at the SM on Sundays. The worshippers, the Sunday worshippers of the SM. Well, you know, it's really, uh, really a real sign of times. That our times are not built for the law of the cross of our Jesus Christ. But do not follow these times. Go against those times, because you are the ones who float over the time and direct the times. The times will bend to the cross of our Jesus Christ. Because, stat crux dum volvitur orbis, the earth goes, flips around, but the cross of our Lord stands. And it will stand and it will vanquish the error of the world of today, as it has done so many times over in history. The Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross of our Lord is just a reminder of the place of the Holy Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in human history. Just like Our Lady of Guadalupe and other things. 
It's the intervention of the cross in the history of the church. And there is no other way that we are going to rebuild our beloved and holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. There is no other way we're going to bring the Protestants back into the Catholic Church. There is no other way. It's not by becoming Protestants ourselves that we're going to bring the Protestants to Catholic Church. No. It's by being good Catholics, lovers of the cross. And that will bring forth what was our Lord was thinking when He was dying on the cross. The salvation of souls. When you say the fifth mystery of the, of the Rosary, the fruit of this mystery, is a great desire in your heart for the salvation of souls. Long and thirst for the salvation of all the souls that are around you. Suffer uh, <coughs> at the sight of seeing them so far away from our Blessed Mother and from Jesus crucified. So far away from the path of, uh, of heaven. And there are many now today. Let it be a, a, your biggest cross. And then God will answer your prayers. And re-Catholicize this nation. Make the Philippines once again what it was. Uh, you know, a great light in the Catholic world. A great cross standing for the illumination of the rest of Asia. Hopefully, when Our Lady will decide. Father and the Son, Holy Ghost.